Have you ever wondered what goes into creating an episode of UH? Be a fly on the wall as Jay and Beck brainstorm, banter, and offer a glimpse into their madness. It may be crazy, personal, or messy, but hey, it's how they get shit done. So kick off your shoes, pour yourself a drink of the day, grab that comfy throw blanket, and attempt to relax as you enter into the minds of the maniacs. Welcome to The Writing Sessions. The Phantom in the Bottle. What about the Menace in the Bottle? That's cool. Menace in a Bottle. Season 3, Episode 4, Menace in a Bottle. The Writing Sessions. Do you remember that movie Time Bandits? Yeah. And it's like all over the place. I don't know why the fuck. But I thought the main kid in it was so cool. And this is when I was like eight. And I went to my parents and I'm like, I want to change my name to Kevin. <laughs> my brother's name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and she's like, what, what are you talking about? And I go, well, I like the kid and Time Bandits. He defeats the evil. And my mom was like, sit the fuck down and have your dinner. And that was it. <laughs> that was the end of trying to change to Kevin. But, yeah. And he was kind of a stupid kid in that. I don't even know. He didn't really do much. Well, he made an impression on you enough to want to change your name to it. Well, I thought the movie was fucking cool. And now when you watch it again, it's really kind of all over the place. <laughs> Did you ever drink bong water by accident? No. You never did? No. You never took a hit of a bong and it went in your mouth? Yeah, but I never drank it and a little bit splashed on my lip. If it got on me, mm-hmm. I kind of was like, and wiped my mouth. We used to do tons of pranks and somebody put bong water in my shit and I drank it and it was nasty. You know how people at parties, they use solo cups with draft beer? Yeah. And people will ash in it? Oh, I've done that. And I've picked it up and not looked when I was playing darts. Had a lot of butts in it. Yep, I've done that. Well, d- never used to clean his bong water. Ugh. We used to take power hits, and sometimes it would just fly in your mouth. They used to be like, don't you want a hit, man? And i take a hit, and then every other night they'd be like, isn't that nice coming home to a hit? And they never cleaned their bong water. That is it so was, gross. It was like fucking black. It was like dark brown. They never changed the bong water. I wouldn't have been hitting off that. You know how many diseases are probably in that shit? (laughs) Drink of the day, the Bowery Blackbird. We've got activated black charcoal. We've got black rum. We could throw some squid ink in there, too. A swirl of squid ink? A swirl of squid ink. We need a good flavor to mix with the rum, though, because the ink and the charcoal are just colorants, so that's fine. It's going to taste more like rum. Maybe like a cherry Coke or something? Okay, so black rum, cherry coke, activated black charcoal, swirl of squid ink. Let's tie it into the black bird. What do you think when the, you think a black bird on the top? A worm? A gummy worm. Fluorescent gummy worm? Because it adds a bit of goth to it. I feel like it should have one more liquor or something in there just to give it one extra pop. A sweet, dark red liqueur made from black currants. It's creme de cassis. I was with and K- we were at some fucking bar downtown. There were different areas you could sit, and there was one that was all like windows you can look outside. And we were all sitting in a row. And was doing fucking shot after shot. And then she started feeling sick. So we went outside, and she faced the wall. And I stood like sort of in front of her to like block a little bit, even though anybody that walked by could see. And it sounded like a fire hose like hitting the wall and I turn around and look and it was black so all the shit she was drinking must have instead of making a nice color it just made black I have never witnessed anyone in my life vomiting black and you've witnessed two people vomiting twice it was weird you're like dude that's not normal no what did she usually it's orange or something yellowy or something I don't even know what she ate but I remember them drinking like crazy like she was doing shots like crazy different ones different weird things and like you know how the chicks would come around with the test tubes yeah two dollars a test tube and one that would be like red one's blue or green she was doing those too
the funniest thing for me when people are puking is when they start breathing through their nose weird. You'll be like, yo, do you want to get some pizza after this? And they're like, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I mean? They start sniffing what? and like getting weird. That's what she started doing. I said, come outside with me. Oh my God. <laughs> it was like, it was a lot. Well, those test tubes must lot. have had some sort of scientific concoctions in them to create black. Yeah, you fucking stay away from the test tubes. Yeah, I never was one for the test tubes or the jello shots or any of that. Just you keep, no. keep moving, keep moving. You don't know what those are going to do to you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What kind of glass you want to put it in? Yeah, that's the you. You got to pull up our glass chart. We did a Collins last time, I think. There's a zombie glass. Served in a zombie glass. You'll be able to do two, and you'll be puking like. Okay. It's twice as tall as like a rocks glass. This is gonna be a serious drink. Drink of the day: the Bowery Blackbird. We if usually... you want to go gawk gawk into the night. Focus. Not liquid courage. You'll need fuel for the nocturnal flight. You'll need a drink to launch you, you into, into, into flight. flight. Start with a zombie glass filled with ice, black rum. I'm going to say sands the spice. I'm just thinking in my head that we were hanging with monsters and we were like, you let me get a Bowery Blackbird and the monster's like, do you really want to drink that? Do you want to have a chick at a bar and they're hanging with a monster pal? And even the monster's like, no, man. So you want this to come in before the cherry cola then? What kind of creature would this chick be hanging out with? A ghoul. A ghoul, okay. Gary the ghoul? Yeah, Gary the ghoul. Hey, bartender, two Bowery Blackbirds for me and my friend. Whoa, 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 whoa. I may be a ghoul, but I don't drink this. Listen, Gary, I don't understand why you're being difficult here. I mean, I'm trying to take you out for a drink. I'm trying to buy you a drink. Yeah, no, I like what you just said in the beginning. Why, Listen, okay. Gary, why are you being so difficult? Why not? You're a ghoul. What does it matter? He could be like, I did, and that's why I'm dead now. <laughs> or something <laughs> <Okay>. like that. <laughs> You'll look better after a double. Hey, bartender, give us a double. Here's your doubles, and here's your IDs back. I think you gave us the wrong ID. This guy looks hotter than Brad Pitt. I know. I'm just a ghoul. Add a test tube of cream to cassis, dark and burning like the blood moon. No need to wait until daylight. The Bowery Blackbird will have you singing in the dead of night. Cheers. There goes a no mercury cover. I got my own model inside post alphabet. Oh, boy. I got one in my box. I'm collecting all six colors. They're free in alphabet. Get one mercury cougar free inside specially marked boxes of alphabets. Collect them and trade them in all six colors. But what if we did a breakfast cereal? You know, they have cereals like Blueberry, Frankenberry, Count Chocula. It could be like that, creature-themed or something. Okay. A commercial now, then? And then we can move things around? Yeah, spooky cereal commercial. Oh, my God. My brother and I would fight over the fucking prize. My mom would go, come outside and help me with the groceries. We would be grabbing the bags and looking for the cereal. You open up the box, and then there's the bag with cereal, and they would put the prize in between the box and the bag. Oh, I thought they put it in the bag. I didn't know that. What kind of prizes and did they have? It was fucking beautiful. At one point, they had transformers in the fucking cereal that you had to put together. They were little plastic things, but these were the pinnacle to me of cereal toys. Oh, it was great. Okay, so one of them was like a helicopter. One was the space shuttle. And it came with fucking decals. Yeah, there was like four of them. I remember people in school had them. And we would like play with our little fucking Transformers in school, our little cereal. The toys back in the day and the cereal were fucking staggeringly awesome. I remember getting like that little sticky octopus you'd throw at the wall. I remember that. I remember everybody started getting those and would throw them at the wall at school and they'd be just crawling down, creepy crawlies. Yep. I don't even remember. Like They don't do them, that anymore, do they? They don't put toys in Very them. rarely. Now it's like you got to send away. No, yeah. give me the fucking toy now. Yeah, you got to clip out the back. Or you have to go mm-hmm. online and register and get your email and get spammed so that you can win the drawing to win the shitty prize. Yeah, no. I'm not saving five boxes and sending away, you know, to get whatever the fuck. But They used to do that um, for cigarettes too, man. Do you remember that back in the day? My brother, he would save all the Marlboro 
everybody was smoking marble. So he would take everybody's boxes. So it wasn't just him. It was all his friends. So right. he had a bag, a Ziploc bag full of them. And he sent away and got this amazing poker chip set that came in a wooden case that you would lift off the top. Wow. And it came with enough chips for everybody. Like we never ran out of chips. It always came with a lot of them. And uh, I remember that. That was really nice. But now, like, some of the toys I'm looking at, there's a trumpet thing. I remember getting, it looked like a little submarine, and you put something in it, and you put it in the bath, and it would dive down and come back up and dive down Ooh, and come back. It would keep cool. doing that. Yeah. You had to put, you put, like, bacon soda or some shit in there. I don't remember. Like, and then they would have cars. Captain Crunch had, like, a surf dude. It was amazing. I just, I couldn't get enough of it. Sometimes they'd have board games, like the back of the, the box was a game. Yep, I remember that. And then they'd that. give you all the pieces. Yep. Remember they put records on them that were like floppy? It was like a piece of floppy plastic, but it would be on the back of the box and you'd peel it off and then you could play it and like it'd be a record. Oh, and the Batman, when they came out with the Batman cereal, it was wrapped in plastic and it had a full sized coin bank. Super detailed, glow in the dark shit. Uh, they'd come with pins and things like iron on patches and cards. They had nerd cereal, which in the box were two packages. So one would be like strawberry and one would be blueberry, and you can mix them in your bowl. Free gum inside, free wacky wafers, uh, the whistle pops and corn pops. This is fucking crazy. What are those things you put in the oven? Shrinky, shrinky dinks yeah. shrinky dinks yeah. they gave those out a couple of times we used to put things in the oven that would plastic that melted wow it's shrinking yeah because you're frying it and it's condensing and releasing fucking crazy amounts of toxins right i think the easy bake ovens were plastic so you're baking your little brownies in a plastic oh, ass oven. Were? i think so let me tell you something about fucking easy bake oven my brother got it at one point and I don't know what he fucking did, but he's like, here, man, I just made some cookies and they were like crumbly. It wasn't like a uniform cookie. It was like just a bunch of crumbles, but this shit was five fucking star gourmet. I don't know what he did, but I ate it all. I was like, dude, what did you do? He'd never told me, but he made something once in the easy bake oven that would have been cracked to most people. And he yeah. He made it. some killer shit. Yeah. And an easy bake. And an easy bake up, and yeah, who who knows what the fuck that did to us? Exactly. Go play in traffic. I used to have so much fun just digging in the dirt, putting my little matchbox cars, having them jump it and flip and smash. I used to love playing in sandboxes, playgrounds, basketball yeah. courts, baseball fields, anywhere I could play. Yep, and you know what? If you got fucked up on the jungle gym, that's your problem. My friend, he had a swing set outside for little kids and we both got on it once we were up high in the air all of a sudden like the ground is coming at us the fucking thing tipped over and flipped yeah it was crazy because it wasn't cemented in man it was just sitting in the backyard we got up and we were fine i've never met anyone that flipped the swing all the way over i don't even think it's possible i don't think it's possible you'd have to be you'd have to have some machine push you so hard people could get high and then if they jumped it was really cool Oh, yeah, I used to do that. You'd be really high in the air. You're like, I'm going to go really high in the air and jump. And then once you jump, you're like, oh, my God, I'm really fucking high. I'm going to hurt myself when I land. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It was scary when you were up there. (laughs) I've seen people walk by the swing set as somebody is flying. You know how you go back and you're all the way up and then you swoop down? Yeah. I've seen people walk by as a person is swooping down and get kicked and they go flying. Yes. And we were fine. We used to play Frogger, and we would go across the swing set where there's like six swings. Yeah. And everyone's swinging at different velocities. No one's swinging in synchronicity. Uh You'd run through and then stop and wait and then run through and stop and wait. And there were people that got nailed. They just... Yeah, and it was a good time. They'd get back up. They didn't cry. Yeah, I remember being on crazy jungle gyms, and I saw somebody just fall and smack their head. And we were like, well, that's... um, You'll be fine. And no, nothing got taken away. So what are those things that you spin around on? Well, we used to get those going, dude. People be flying off. 
Was yeah. It? Okay. Because yeah. we were all kind of fast, my little crew, and whoever was on that and the others were pushing, they'd get it going pretty crazily, and you'd go flying off. I was always a pusher. You know that Wegmans on the hill there in the city on Pond Street? Yes. On the other side of the hill, you would see a park, and they had that spinny thing. And I remember just people flying off of it. You're like, they're fucked up. Yeah. And, you know. You need to do shit like that. Toughen yourself. Well, also to teach yourself lessons and not be a dumbass, go to a cliff, take a selfie and die. You you learn, mm-hmm. you kind of learn from these things. Like maybe I shouldn't walk around barefoot in the city because there's broken glass. We had toxic cereal with toys that were, who knows what they did. You know, we had fun activities to do that you can get hurt on. See, if you survived those things, you felt great. I survived the spinny thing. I mean, we used to climb trees that were fucking eight stories high, and we'd be all the way up there. And one time I did fall. My friend had a tree in his yard that was monstrous. We used to go up at the top of the tree and throw snap it down at people on the sidewalk. Right. And they'd never know what the hell they're coming from. We would just be throwing snap it and shit at them, and they wouldn't even know because the tree had leaves and all that. One time we were really high up, and the branch broke. And I was bouncing off the branches, but luckily I grabbed one. Oh. And I didn't hit, but I, I remember pulling my arm muscle because you're flying down. And my friend was like, oh my God, I thought you were going to die, dude. I just see you going down and branches flying off. Oh. <laughs> yeah, good time. It's Marshmallow Pebbles. Loaded with so many marshmallows to rock your whole mouth. By the way, I'm looking at Fruity Pebbles. Fruity Pebbles with marshmallows were the best. I never had them with the marshmallows. I'm okay with that. Oh, them. Jesus Christ. But you no, know. No, it's already crack. Imagine it double crack. I have to say that the generic Fruity Pebbles are sweeter. Oh, it's fucking great. They're sweeter. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, they're like better. In the bag. They're called Fruity Dino Bites in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's weird though? What? Like whenever I get them now and you go to the bathroom the next day, your poop is green. Yes, it is from the dye. What are your top three favorite bad cereals? Well, I'd probably say Fruity Pebbles. There was this one cereal called Quisp. It was a blue box that had a little snorkel-looking alien on it. They're like little mini bowls. But what flavor the milk, were they? It tasted kind of like a malt type of thing. It was just amazing. So Quisp, Fruity Pebbles, and then at one point, I don't know what they do now, but they had Frosted Rice Krispies with marshmallows. Mm. And they were like tropical fruit marshmallows. I remember destroying those. Blueberry was great, too, though. And they used to make them more sugary back then. Like, alphabets were sugary as fuck. Fuck, yeah. What's the apple ones? The green box? Oh, Apple Jacks. Uh, Apple Jacks. I got them recently, and they're shit. But back in the day, they were fucking just caked with sugar and apple flavor. Anyway, those are my three. What are your three? Captain Crunch with Crunch Berries. Oh, that was fantastic. Yeah. Number two is Fruity Pebbles. And number three, it's not a throwback. It's new. It's Wegmans peanut butter and jelly cereal. It is like the Crunch Berries and Captain Crunch. And some are peanut butter and some are jelly. Oh, you... Cinnamon Toast Crunch is another good one, too. When you buy the box, they're not as sugary. But when you buy those dollar cups, they're loaded with sugar. Sugary. Delicious. I want cereal, man, now. <laughs> Inhalants can make people feel good for a short period of time, but they can also cause choking, asphyxiation, seizures, comas, death. Did you ever get high off of model glue? I never got high off it. I never huffed. I don't mean huff, but like, did it ever, do you ever put something together with it? Because I did and it got me fucked up. No, no. No. I think the most I got fucked up was off a of whippet. I'll tell you what, I was doing a Dukes of Hazard model, you know, their car in my grandmother's kitchen. I remember where I was sitting and everything a Sunday, so all the hens and the, the Italians were in the other room smoking coffee and like gambling. And I'm sitting there making this thing, but I'm not even kidding you. It was similar to when I sniffed poppers that one time. It made me dizzy. My head was getting like stingy feeling. It was really weird. You probably lost about 50 brain cells. Yeah. It came in a foil tube that was white and orange. 
and it was clear and I didn't even finish the fucking model because I got so fucking high because I was sticking my head over the fucking car and those fumes just kept going right up into me. Okay, you lost 5,000 or 5 million brain cells. I'd be like, I don't believe that glue shit. But it happened to me. I don't yeah. believe the glue rumor, but it happened to me. And this shit is real, I'm telling you. This shit's real. <laughs> that glue back then in the fucking early 80s was would fuck you up. No wonder why people were sniffing glue and shit. You know what I mean? Do you remember kids eating Elmer's glue? No. Do you remember the art room glue the kids would put the popsicle sticks in and eat it? Oh, yeah. I used to see kids eating the fucking glue all the time. I was like, why are you eating that? Doesn't that taste weird? Oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, isn't there like horse parts and glue? Yeah, I think there's ground up horse and glue. And you know what else is fucked up about the glue? It didn't go away right away. It took like a a half an hour for me to be normal. Oh, boy, you really got high then. I'm walking around like, oh, my God. (laughs) You know, like I didn't want to tell my mom, but I was walking around. I was fucked up. I was drinking water. And it took a long time, and then I, I just said, I can't do that anymore. At one point, my punk friend, who reminded me of, like, Matt Dillon in The Outsiders, like a punk. Right. With, like, long hair parted in the middle, feathered. There was a moment in time for, like, a few months where he was inhaling butane. In, How did he, he not was, die from that? I did it one time, and I didn't like it. It was like it made... Again, it made me feel all chemically lightheaded and weird. Holy shit. We had this place, the Green Garage, and you can go, it was behind the house next to the <laughs> Nobody fucked around in this garage. You never saw people going in and out of the house. So the Green Garage is our little hangout. You can go around to the back of it and climb the tree into the Green Garage, second level, and it was like dangerous. There were holes everywhere, rusty nails you could fall through, everything. We'd go back there and smoke cigarettes, smoke weed, and he would always be doing butane. And when he did a hit of it, it would make his voice like deep. He'd be like, yeah, man, this shit's good. And then his voice would slowly come back to normal. He would be doing butane like crazy. There'd be no butane left at the corner store because he'd be fucking buying them and doing them all. I keep telling disaster she won't be able to get into the pearly gates because she's not baptized. What does she think of that? She probably doesn't believe in it. So. She goes, well, she baptized me once. Did she? Does that count? I go, I don't know. She, like, put some water over her head and said, you're baptized. The power of Christ compels you! It might have counted. Might have counted, right? I, I think it counted. Because she does stuff with intention, so it probably did count. Well, she's partially a fucking... Yeah. trained. Well, she was a nun. Yeah. I think she was kind of baptized there. It wasn't like a big to do about, but definitely she got a little baptism. Okay. Yeah. Better than nothing, right? I think so, because I don't think uh, disaster is going to go for a formal baptism. Nah. Well, I mean, we did when we were kid. Like, I, I was a baby, you know what I mean? I was young. You know, the Italians, as soon as you pop out of the womb, you got to get baptized with the priest and everything. Yeah, they put you in the little dress thing. Yeah. Even the boys, don't they have like a little white outfit they put them in or something, or no? No. They just wrap you and pour fucking oils and shit on your head and say prayers. Then they did that mm-hmm. shit like the Godfather. Right shit. away. Like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You had to pick the, the Godparents had to be there. Now nobody does that shit. I'm the Godfather parent or whatever. I think they do, though. They still do it. Yeah? Yeah. Because mm. I know the Jersey Shore people do it, but they make it all big. They make it like a big to-do about, which is probably <laughs> what guineas, it was. Man. Oh, yeah they're, yeah. they're all guineas. I forgot. That's yeah. right. Okay. They're all fucking <laughs> Okay, that makes sense then. <laughs> no wonder. I'm like, oh, my God, all the family was there. You know. Oh, yeah. I've gone to them, man. They put out trays of monogat. If anybody gets pissed, I'm fucking Italian. At my first communion, yep. little party. I got $242. I don't remember a lot, but I remember I got $242. And my parents were like, we're just going to put it away for you. And they spent it. Of course. I never got that money. Well, we were poor. So they they were like, oh, shit, there's some groceries and some beer for dad. Yep. I was pissed. I'm thinking I'm going to get Atari games. I'm going to fucking get some Transformers. No, it just disappeared. Where'd my money go? You're watching Nickelodeon. Now, back to Double Dare. I auditioned for that, by the way. For Double Dare. You really did? You auditioned for it? I went downtown with my friend, and we sat there. We had to sign things and everything. And then we went into a room with other people, and we did, like, a round. It was like a production assistant would play Mark Summers, and he would, you know, it was me and versus, like, three other pairs of people, like friends, and I fucked it up. What I do you fucked mean? it what up. What'd you do? They asked us the question, what was the name of George Jetson's dog? And I hit the button to zap in. 
And I said, asteroid. Oh and no, it was wrong. Astro. And it was wrong. It was Astro. Oh. And I, and then we never made it to the second round. We had to go like to the War Memorial or one of those things, and there was a million people there. I fucked it up. It would have been man. awesome if you got in there. Yeah, because they gave you fucking Ataris, they gave you computers, Prizes. they gave you fucking good shit, like tech shit, like fucking arcade games and all sorts of stuff. Well, yeah, it wasn't meant to be. I um came up with a funny name for my cat. Oh, yeah? Which cat? It's Super Fuzz, because he's getting a little fat in the ass. His new name is Mr. Thick. Mr. Thick. <laughs> so, like, the whole day I was singing songs like, Call me Mr. Vader. Call Mr. Wrong. Call him Mr. Thick. Or, like, that Mr. Vane song from the 90s. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, Mr. Thick. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Let's eat some food. <laughs> like <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Sandman? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't think of any more Mr. songs. Oh, yeah. Is there any other Mr. Songs? I mean, well, there's the Guns N' Roses Mr. Brownstone, I think. Oh, or... yeah. And then there's. Mr. Me. No. <laughs> I will not dishonor my cat by singing that song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Well, Mr. Yeah, Wendell. That's, that. <laughs> that's what Disaster thought of, Mr. Wendell. Is hmm. he getting thick because of the meds? I think so. He's like solid. It's like you packed more atoms into him. He's dense. Yeah, I think is what he is. Cats are just built different. Like I have a little guy now, and it's weird because I used to have big guys like your cat. And... I pick him up and I go, oh, oh man, he's a heavy hitter, huh? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I pick him up. Oh Jesus! It's like a twenty-pound barbell now. Yeah, he's yeah. There's a light twenty pounds and there's a heavy twenty pounds. He's Mister <laughs> Thick. This one. At the park last night, the black Tim Capello came out to play. Oh, really? Playing really, really well, too. Because, like, in the middle of the park, like I said before, is this, like, really big, huge U-shaped configuration of benches. So I'm sitting there, and then this dude just comes and plops a case down and pulls out a thing, shirtless. Not wow. huge, but, you know. And uh, he was fucking playing, like, Tim Capello, man. Was he playing anything we know, like... He was just playing, like, jazz riffs. You know, it sounded really good. You're on a Tim Capello kick. Well, the the saxophone guy made me think of it yesterday. I was, like, sitting there. I went to the park to think, and then I'm seeing the black Tim Capello. The last time I flew, I'm like, I'm just going to pound fucking drinks, man. And I had, like, 500 bucks on me. I didn't bring a card, and they wouldn't take a card, so I couldn't drink on the flight to Florida. Oh. So I was fucking freaking out the whole fucking time. Meanwhile, everybody behind me, there was like a frat crowd in the back, and they were partying like Belushi, dancing. They were fucking toasting and cheersing and laughing. And I'm like, I want to really ask them if they, if they would buy me a drink. but Just give them I cash. And then I didn't spend much money because I was staying with my friend's grandparents, which is really weird really crazy thing happened like the next day i didn't spend much money so i had like 400 bucks on me i'd never been in the ocean before we went to the beach and uh i had shorts on and i had my money in the pockets of the shorts and um they were like are you gonna fucking come in or not and i like just jumped up and ran right into the ocean i'm like all right let's do it and i ran into the ocean i'm diving i'm swimming around and shit i'm like this is fuck okay not bad we're all you know in the water right and then i'm like Oh, my God, my money was in my pocket. Oh, no. So I lost $400 in the ocean, and we got, like, 80 of it back, like, by floating towards oh the, you know. Oh, my God, yeah. We were scouring up and down the fucking thing. There must have been people for the next week who would just be swimming and see a 20 floating or a 50 floating oh and be like, God. oh, my God. And I got some temporary thing to get on the plane. I get to the airport. And I had to check in a second bag. They wouldn't let me do it on the flight. So I had to pay 50 something dollars. When I showed up in the story, I had 80 cents left. This is before I'd carry a wallet. I would just bring whatever I needed and put it in the fold of the wad of money. So my ID was in that fold, all that money. Oh, man. So I was screaming at the fucking sky. Like, 
God. I'm like, you fuck, you sandal wearing bearded motherfucker. It was your fault like, though. <laughs> I know, but I had this tirade and, but they were laughing behind me because I just, I freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> blaming God for being a dumbass and running into the ocean yeah. with your fucking shit on you. Yeah, like, I've done that with necklaces in the ocean and things that I really cared about and I learned quick. Don't wear your sunglasses in there. Don't wear your any kind of jewelry or necklaces that could possibly come off your neck or your fingers. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've lost a lot to the ocean. And it's really sad because they're special items that you lose to the ocean. Yeah, well, it's some mermaids and gill men are like oh shit i guess uh we're drinking tonight yeah ariel you know? swimming around with my magical necklace yeah the id is what freaked me out the most i'm yeah. like how am i gonna get back home right i mean if you were well, even if you were driving you would need it but i mean you unless you got pulled over you could probably make it but when you take a plane you need an id or you need a passport yeah oh man the day before i went to court castle and it was a lovely time stories of misfortune Parmigiana. Parmigiana. I think they should parm everything. Parm everything. For sure. Parm everything. Parm it all. A hamburger parm. <laughs> parm it. Fucking, I don't care. <laughs> bread it, fry it with Italian breadcrumbs. Yeah, and throw some, some sauce and some cheese, cheese and on sauce. It. Some the fuck's better than that. I know. I agree. I am totally in agreement. Sausage parm. Sausage parm. I don't know. You have to flatten it out, probably, but you could do it. Flatten out. There's going to be a lot of flat lining after all the, all the farms we come out with because everybody's hearts are going to stop and Why explode. Why haven't they done a sausage parm? Why hasn't nobody done a sausage parm? I think we just discovered a new thing that could take off. But people are going to go, but there is a sausage parm. But we're going to go, no, not a sausage in a bun with the cheese and sauce on it. We're talking the sausage is parmed out. That's what I was thinking. Throw it in the egg, then toss it in the breadcrumbs, throw it in the deep fryer. You'd yep. have a heart attack for sure, but it'd be so with good. Some, uh, with some cheese and sauce. Arrivederci. Ciao, ciao. Oh, Jay, spider. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. Are you serious? Man, it's a big one, and he just came climbing out at me. They're out to get me now, man. They're out to get me. They told their mates, man. <sighs> and now I have a huge spider bite on my arm. I woke up with it, and I'm like, what is this welt? It was sitting up on the ceiling, and then it came down like Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible, like on the wire. Yeah. And got you. I'm going to get her. It was waiting. It was, and then this one just came climbing right out from behind my computer across the wall towards me, and I'm like, nope. He was sitting up there on the ceiling with one of his eight eyes on his phone so he can watch the Yankee highlights, and then one of the other eight eyes was looking at you, and once you were going to sleep... Yeah. All the eyes turned to you and looked at you. And then it came down like... And it's a bit of a hero now. Because <laughs> it got a bite in, To the man. spider community. <laughs> it probably is. not I'll have some weird disorder within the next week. I'll be like, I can no longer eat shellfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not that I did before, but I had a piece of shrimp and I almost died. I don't know where that came from. I'm thinking this is a spider bite. Yeah, and right now... When you win and that people put you up on their shoulders yeah. and walk you around, it's doing that right now and it's sipping wine and spitting it out at people because it's just, <laughs> it's filthy with, with power right now because of what it did to you. And it's probably it like gladiator music playing, like victory gladiator music playing and and they're throwing flowers at it and shit oh my god and all, and all the broads or if it's a chick all the dudes are fucking backstage waiting that's it i'm gonna have to bomb i'm gonna have to fucking go around this house now because it's just freaking me out because he, i bet you he came down bit me he's celebrating he's gonna do a double play he's gonna double tap me he's gonna come back tonight he might he's gonna he's gonna go i got her once i'm gonna get her again and they're sitting around the campfire like because everybody else got drunk and passed out and there's a couple left sitting around a campfire and they're going tell me that story again and he's like yeah i i snuck into the place and uh i waited for her i had one eye on my phone i was watching the yankee highlights and the other eye was on her and then once she was cutting down trees there's no stopping me i got her and that's it you know how like in dance as a wolf they keep making him tell the story of how they shot the buffalo because they had this feast right I don't want to tell it again. And they're like, one more time. He keeps telling the fucking story. He's tired of it. He's full. He's drunk. And that's what the spider is doing right now. He's telling the story of Beck Maniac. Yeah. I'm a serial yeah. murderer to them. He's like a bounty hunter.
Yeah, he's getting endorsement deals. He's on the talk shows, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy the Spider, everybody. Here's Sammy the Spider. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, if Sammy comes to play, he's dead. So they'll have to send in another guy. <laughs> oh, my Lord. You really pissed off the community, I man. just killed another one. And I sucked up a really weird-looking one today. It was. It looked like, you know, that slime that kids play with that's kind of green, kind of yellow, but you could see through it, too? Oh, my Lord. Okay, it was the color of that. It looked like the consistency of slime. And, what the fuck's crawling around in your house, And dude? he was sitting up on the ceiling, and I'm like, what is that? And for the longest time, he didn't move, so I'm like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. And, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to get the little hand vac and see what's going on up there. And so I grabbed the hand vac, and as I got closer to it, I'm like, what the hell is that? I never saw a spider that looked like that before. I don't know what the hell kind of breed that was. Like, is it a bush spider? I mean, is it a... <laughs> what if that one was the bounty hunter that they called in? Because he's from New Zealand or something. <laughs> and they called him in, and it failed. But Sammy did not. Sammy so did he, not. No, Sammy didn't, man. So... That's why he's even more celebrated, because this fucking crocodile hunter type of fucking dude came. Green motherfucker. Yeah. I sucked hunter. him up. I made sure he was definitely <laughs> sucked up in there, too. I was like, I'm going to pick up some other stuff with this vacuum now and make sure he gets in there. But whoever got me, Sammy, is that what you named him? <laughs> yeah. Sammy got me. Got me. We thought of another invention. What's that? Uh, disaster and I yesterday. Or was it today? I can't remember. You know how we use the vacuum cleaner to suck up things? You know how they have those handheld vacuum cleaner, like little dust buster. Dust, dust buster yeah, clean up your couch, whatever. Sort of like that, but it has an extension, like a tripod. You can extend it so you can get the corners of like <laughs> right. the ceiling. Right. It sucks it in, the fucking bug or roach or whatever. And when it sucks it in, you know how when they grind up cars, it's like these teeth that are like Right. So there's like a circling. blender built in, like a little like blender a, blade. Like a little When it sucks them in, it just fucking crushes them. And disaster's like, but wouldn't that make a mess? I go, no, it sucks. It in. There's a bag you can throw it away like the vacuum cleaner. They don't have those probably, huh? No, I don't think so. They have it where you could suck it in but it still could be alive in the little container until you empty it. Because mm. we do it all the time. Like, we'll suck a beetle up, we'll say, or a fly. And uh, yeah. it'll be in there flying around, basically, or moving, walking around inside of it until they die, finally. Oh. We, one time, we had a stink bug. Because in the country, you go through these, like, weird rural waves of insects. So you'll have yeah. one week will be, like, stink bugs. And you're like, what the hell are these things? Why are they all over the house? And they get in. They just walk around your window sills, And you suck them up. And I think I had a terrarium of stink bugs in there, dude. I think there was, like, 20 in there at one point. I'm looking. They're all alive just walking around. So I would suck up hairballs to see if they'd go, Ugh! Those fuckers lived. And then we had a wasp versus stink bug battle. Oh. The stink bug won. And really? The, yeah, I was surprised. Kat and I were putting bets on it. Like, who's going to win in this? Because, they, yeah. they, you know, this wasp was one of those, like, red ones. Like, it was like a burgundy red color, like a big ant. Yeah. And he was pissed. Wasps are assholes. And so uh -huh. he was over and he was grabbing the stink bug and he was taking his little torso like, Argh! and we were watching the battle <laughs> and he won. The stink bug won. I can't believe it. Wow. Dustbuster wars in our dustbuster. <laughs> <laughs> you should um, film it and put bets on it. But I do weak. realize that most of our writing sessions are composed of insect things, but it's just because tis the season right now. Yeah. And soon they're all going to go. <laughs> Because it's going to be too cold. And, and it's going to so be glorious. Wet. Just go. Be glorious. Go away. There's little gnats and shit flying around here all the time. Yep. Oh, you get the little gnats too? Because we have fucking skylights and they're not perfectly sealed, you know? So little gnats will come in. But this is the music you should play when you see the next battle. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's good music. <laughs> <laughs> And for the next fight, we've got the spider versus the fly. And coming up later, the stink bug versus the wasp. <laughs> we've got a great battle coming up, folks. We've got Frankie the fly versus 
Sammy the Spider. Yeah. Stay tuned for the epic battle of a lifetime. And in this corner, we have Frankie the Fighting Fly. I'm going to take my wings and punch you in the thorax, you bastard. And in this corner, we have Sammy the Stinging Spider. (laughs) Yeah, you going to come at me, bro? You think I have a thorax? I don't even have a thorax, bro. I took down that maniac. You ain't sick. (laughs) And then then the, the, the carnage. Uh, and the stink bug, he did kick me in my thorax. <laughs> I guess I'll see you in another place. I think the stink bug has this, it's kind of got this weird armor on it because they look like prehistoric bugs. Really? Yeah, and I think they fly a little bit. And so when they fly, it's scary. Oh, Jesus, look at that thing. They have like a fucking a shield on them, yes, exactly. Yes, and it looks like impervious to like stinging and shit. That's what I think happened. They're gnarly looking, those things. They're God, flicker. I fucking hate insects. Flicker ate one once because he's a hunter and he started foaming at the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we won't allow him to eat the stink bugs. He can eat all the sky raisins he wants, but stink bugs are off limits. They have a nasty chemical smell to them. Yeah. When you smush them, you just don't smush them. That's why I suck them up with the vacuum. Oh. Oh, you can't smell. You never smelled a stink bug. It smells like stink? That's why they're called stink bugs, because when you smush them. Is it comparable to any other odor? Not really. I haven't found an odor it compares with yet. Really? Yeah, I wonder if people have written, like, what they think a stink bug smells like, because I I really wouldn't even know how to describe it. No shit. They get in through the window cracks. Any kind of crack you have. How do they know? They don't have a brain. I woke up the other day, and I'm looking at the ceiling. I see this black dot on the ceiling. Right. And then it, like, went to the left. It circled to the left and then circled to the right. And I go, oh, God. Oh, fucking something weird. So I don't even it? know what it was. You didn't hunt it? Oh, no, I got it. I got it, but I didn't, like, examine it. It looked like the size of a ladybug, but it was black. So I don't know what the fuck it was. I'm watching it stay in the same spot, but circling to the left, circling to the right, circling to the left, to the right. I'm going, what is this thing doing? It sounds like a little beetle of some sort, like a little, little. One. <sighs> it didn't even know, it, like, walk straight, do something. You know, it just was circling. It's just really weird. And I go, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> one minute it's circling. Do I go left and right again? And the next minute... <laughs> you know, after the flush of the toilet. When the stink bug feels threatened, they produce a fluid that smells and em- they admit it uh, through their scent glands. They can spray it up to several inches, and they what? can definitely control when they release the compounds. The chemicals are produced from the top of the abdomen, and in the adults, there's a hole on each side of the thorax where the chemical exits the body. Uh-huh. If you squash a stink bug, you're likely to get some of that fluid on you or release it when the insect is smashed. Holy crap. And it's like a light, sweet, nauseating smell. But not a good sweet. Not like a cake or a bakery good. It's it's weird. Very, very weird. They look ready for battle. I'm melting! Melting! My gloves the other day started melting from glue. Oh, my God. I put on rubber gloves to fix my headphones. They have a crack on where your head is, like that little area. Yeah. And um, I put on glue because when you get Gorilla Glue on your fingers, you know, it's crazy. And Disaster is holding the fucking headphones, and I'm applying the fucking glue. I'm smearing it and everything. And then she goes, where's that smoke Where's that smoke coming from? And I look down, and it was smoking. It was like a chemical fire reaction on the rubber? Yeah, with the Gorilla Glue. So you can't do anything with rubber gloves or Gorilla Glue. Thanks yeah, for telling me that, because I would have never known that. It was crazy. You I mean, what use... the fuck's in this shit? Do you know two weird movies I watch for Christmas time? What? There are two of them. Uh, Amadeus and Eyes Wide Shut. 
Okay. Is that weird? <laughs> For Christmas time? I don't know why. Well, because Eyes Wide Shut does take place during Christmas. Yeah. But I don't know why Amadeus. I don't know what it is. Do you have any weird Christmas movies that you watch that aren't Christmas? That aren't Christmas? Yeah. Not like that. <laughs> Should I be locked up? Am I certifiable? It's just, it's a little <laughs> odd. I mean, I expected yeah, I you to say like, uh, like Die Hard. The and, Goonies or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not real Christmassy. Amadeus is depressing as fuck. <laughs> I know. I don't know why. Christmas like. I think Jesus was just going, that's not what I want you to watch. Oh, shit! A rat! There's a rat! There's a motherfucking rat! When I worked at the styrofoam factory in Syracuse, our little break room, I started drinking coffee for the first time because it would be at 6.30 in the morning to be there at 6.30 in the morning. It was fucking torture. And I started drinking coffee there for the first time, and they would have, you know, those big yellow jugs of sugar? They would leave that open with a spoon. We wouldn't even bother looking. We would just pour shit in there and then, the, you know, the coffee. One time I noticed a brown little thing in there. And then I uncover all these rat shit that were in the sugar. What? There was rat shit in the sugar. Why and there was this... are they pooping in there? I would think they would eat it. I don't know, man, but they were obviously fucking frolicking around like it was a goddamn uh, sandbox or something. There was this really crusty, skinny, he looked a hundred. He looked like he would go on forever. This dude. Oh, I thought you were going to say a rat. I was picturing the one with Big Ed out in the Philippines. (laughs) No, he, we told him, dude, there's rat shit in the sugar. And he's like, hasn't killed me yet. And just kept using it. Oh my God. You could get diseased. Uh Uh-huh. This guy was one of those dudes that nothing would fuck with him. Yeah. He, he, he wasn't an asshole. He was actually cool. He used to let us listen to Howard Stern. And was like, I don't care what you put on. So we would always try to work with him and listen to Howard. And it was great. It was great. There was this dude, Bob, that worked there. Who was He was a really goofy dude. He had like a mullet. Like super nice, but really goofy and funny. And I, I don't know why I started calling him this, but I would call him Bob DeLob. For some reason, when you said Bob, I started thinking Mr. Bob Dabalina. Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina. Remember that song? This is a recent song? No, this is old. This is like 80s, 90s. It's got to be. Really? I, unless I'm making it up, I swear I remember song Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina. What the fuck? You got a Raiders hoodie on. Nice. They're dancing and shit. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just see what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> the rap in the 90s and 80s was fantastic. It was fun. It was like you could dance to it. This looks fucking 91, 31 years ago. I can't believe we didn't know about Mr. Dabalina. I like this dude. The fucking rap, it was so inviting back then. It yeah. was like a party. It was like, you want to have a party? Okay, here, here's some music for it. I totally it was agree. All, now it's like so separated and so robotic, and it's just about the same couple of things, money, chicks. I remember I'd go oh, to yeah. school dances and they'd be playing. It takes two. Fantastic. Dougie Fresh. Dougie Fresh. He'd be like. <laughs> yeah, he'd be like. The last one we went to was Lenny Kravitz. It was fucking phenomenal. It was fucking great. One hit after another. I didn't even know he was still rocking. He yeah he's he was touring like crazy for a while. Now he's got his own fucking island and he's just walking around and posing for pictures. He's got his own island. Yeah, he got like a little island retreat thing. Do you know who he was banging for a while? Demi. They were going to get married. (laughs) No, uh, Nicole Kidman. Really? They were going to get they married? They were together for like five years. I never even knew that. Wait, was this pre-Tom Cruise or post-Tom Cruise? A couple of years after she divorced Tom Cruise in 2001. Okay. They dated and then they broke up in 2007. They just circle them around, it seems, huh? Lisa Bonet, Adriana Lima. I don't know who that is. Um, she's this like model chick. 
rumored Michelle Rodriguez, Naomi Campbell, Marissa Tomei. That's the one I'm jealous about. Okay. Kate Moss, Natalie Imbruglia. Okay. He banged fucking Johnny Depp's future wife, Vanessa Paradis, Kylie Minogue, Chelsea Handler, Madonna, Kylie yeah, Minogue. Yeah, Madonna. She banged Tupac. Have you seen her lately? Yeah. It's scary. She's horrifying. She scares she me to like look at her. She looks like a fucking Venusian or yeah, something she now. Fucking <laughs> she looks like the fucking Pilates. Did she like... Or whatever. <laughs> Don't, I don't know how you could fucking bang something like that. You're uh, looking at the alien face. It's like a nightmare. I'd have to keep my eyes closed and imagine her in her 80s style. Desperately what, you turn the lights off and, and, and put Desperately Season Susan on the, on the TV in the background? <laughs> yeah, oh, man. Because there's no way. Imagine opening your eyes and seeing those big, weird lips that are all stretched up like Joker. The cheeks. The, cheek, the cheek, insane cheekbone That thing. are filled in the forehead that doesn't move. The eyebrows that don't flex at all. Pull back face. Quit doing shit to your face like this. Just put on normal, little bit of makeup, and you'll be beautiful. We're watching 90 Day Fiance, right? Yeah. Which I'm embarrassed to fucking say. A couple of the chicks, like a majority of the chicks, and it's one in particular, her face is so fucking done up. Right. It looks like a Kardashian on steroids. You know, her eyebrows are giant. Her lips are giant. They showed her put on makeup. It must have taken a couple hours. The girls just do too much now. I just wish someone but, would shake them and go, look at yourself. God damn it, look in the mirror. Does that look yeah. normal to you? you know, the chicks in our day would have put on a little lipstick, maybe a little eyeliner. Yeah. And maybe a little Mascara, foundation. Mascara, foundation, yeah, a little, powder, little, little, little this, that. But it was something you could wipe off with a towel at the end of the night. Their yeah. natural beauty came out still. Even it when their makeup was off, they had a glow. And they still look right. good. Just age. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. We all do it. It's fine. There's something nice about just gracefully aging. There is. They it's just good. look so crazy now. Like, I don't I don't know how they look in the mirror. What are they? Surgical failures. They leave here. Too many implants and facelifts over the years. There's a, a sequel to Escape from New York called Escape from L.A. And a certain part of L.A. is, I forget what they call it. But it's like a town of plastic surgery people. And they don't look far off now. <laughs> I remember back in the, in the 90s going, wow, can you imagine if it's like that? And now I bet you if you walk around L.A. enough, you can pick out oh, yeah. people to populate this fucking plastic surgery it village. It seems like almost all of them. Like if you type in a Hollywood starlet, unless they're super young in their prime, like Zendaya or something. Yeah. They look filled, like Tori Spelling. She had all that lip shit. Do you know the chick and the boys, Starlight? Yeah. The, you know, the main blonde chick? Yeah. We're watching the new season, and a couple episodes in, I look at Disaster, and I go, I think she had her fucking lips done. Oh, Because no. her lips were sticking out, and she had this little mouth before, and now her lips stick out. Yep, she definitely had a little mouth before. And she might have had other things, because we looked it up, and there was a thing trending. Like, did the chick who played Starlight get plastic surgery? She just looks different. It looked like she got her eyes done and her lips done a little bit. I don't know, man. The defense is wrong. Now, I was watching um, on YouTube. I got in this hole. They have these shorts called Dinner with Don, and it's Don Rickles. A couple years before he died, so he's really kind of old. But different people sit down for about 10 minutes and just fuck with him and eat dinner with him. And one of them was Marissa Tomei, and she's aging nicely. She, you can see the wrinkles. And I looked at her, I went, I don't think she got any work done. She still looks good. I, I don't mind. Where are you going? I'm going upstairs. Because I'm going to put my nut set on your drum set. Why are our brothers defective? <laughs> a bit of defective in there. My first VCR, Yeah. I used to walk through Sears, and I noticed they had a table. And people that would take shit back that was a little banged up would be on the table. I got my first VCR that way. And it was a really great one. It lasted forever. It was all cool looking. But it's a bit dented up and scratched. It was defective. You know, it was kind of defective. And that's why it was only like fucking one fifth the price. Right, right. It still functioned. Right. But it had some problems. Exactly. So it was a little bit defective. It was sans, <laughs> sans 100%. <laughs> Imagine them hearing this shit. <laughs> They're never going to hear this. It's going to be omitted, but it's hilarious. 
<laughs> They're a bit defective. They're defective, watered down. And I know that for a fact because, you know, when I'd come home from going to school, yeah. it would be like, might as well play victory music when I opened up the door and walked in. <laughs> 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 Are you so, you'd come home and he'd be spawning all over? Yeah, because I was the first oh asshole my to go God. away to college. This is my brother. Why aren't there any pictures of me as a baby? They're all pictures of Beck when she's a baby. Your mom's got pictures of just you around? Well, there's just a lot of me and just very little of him. <laughs> because she doesn't want to be reminded that you have a little bit of deficiency. Right. <laughs> <laughs> They're deficient. I love how you went from defective to deficient. <laughs> like their DNA, it looks a little twisted. It's broken and frayed in a couple areas. Yep, it's shedding. Yeah, it's like if you took, when you get a remote for a TV and you can get Duracell batteries and it'll last you forever. Right. Or you can get the cheap Panasonic ones that aren't even alkaline and put them in there. Yeah. They don't really last as long. Right. But they, you know, they work. But they're not that great. But you're going to have to replace them very shortly. And but why do you replace them? Because they're not <laughs> Duracell. They're deficient. They're deficient. And a bit bootleggy, too. <laughs> Their DNA is a bit of a bootleg of what we got. Right. We're like the Duracell copper top. When you look at our fucking DNA, <laughs> it looks like uh, Michelangelo <laughs> put it together. You look at their DNA... It's kind of like when you get a puzzle and you throw it up in the air and just put some pieces together. (laughs) It's a little janky. A little bit janky. (laughs) When you really want to gamble and you get that deck of cards that's worn and a couple are missing, so you take the joker, you draw an ace on there and throw it in, and it works, but it's kind of not really a real deck of cards. We're saying our brothers are deficient and defective and janky. What? It's okay. If, you know what? They need to look in the mirror and they need to own up to the fact that they're kind of watered down. Yeah. You know, like that first pot of coffee with yeah. the grounds yeah. that's really rich and good. Yep. And then if I threw water in it again, you're going to get coffee, but it's just not bright. It's going to be very, it, very light. And uh, you would, I would sip my coffee. And then I'd do one for my brother, and he would sip it and go, this is kind of watered down. And I would point at him and go, exactly. Exactly. Watered down. (laughs) WD, my friend. (laughs) 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 WD. Their fucking DNA has a little dash and then (laughs) WD. The colors aren't so bright under the microscope. I'll tell you what, (laughs) the aliens aren't harvesting them for reproduction, that's for sure. They would go... So, what have you brought me? I brought you this specimen here, sir. Wait a second. I got his brother right here. You know what? Get rid of that one. I can tell there's something wrong with that one. Do you want me to throw him back, sir? Well, I'm not going to fucking clone it. If I'm going to clone something, it has to be pristine. It has to be full. I apologize, Commander. This one's a WD. I'll go ahead and get you another one. <laughs> please don't let it happen again. No no younger brothers, please. You got it, Commander. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so if there's ever a rapture, all the divisions are going to be left on Earth. <laughs> Yeah, they're just a little bit watered down, man. Just a little. They're just. That's right. You know, we love them, but they're watered down. We love you, <laughs> but, you know, you're refurbished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we came off the fucking belt, the factory, and they wrapped us in a nice, we're, all the packaging and everything. We're fucking collector's edition. You're refurbished. Yeah, you fell on the ground. And then you're a bit damaged, and then they threw you in the bin. You know how Amazon, you can buy these mystery boxes with returns and things in there? Right. They go into there. Return to sender. Yeah, return to sender. <laughs> That's what the Elvis song was about, bros. Yeah, bros. It was about you. It was about you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some things have a nice shine to them. Yeah. And some things are a little murky looking. They're not a high gloss. They're more of a matte. Yeah, they're not. We're the shiny buff, and you're the mat. You don't have as much gleam. No. You know? And that's because you're deficient. Right. 
you're watered down, <laughs> defective. you're refurbished, and you're defective. <laughs> oh, shit. Is there you, any else? Is, <laughs> if I publish this, people are going to be like, these two are the biggest assholes. <laughs> Hey, we're just speaking the truth, oh. okay? You know we're speaking the truth. <laughs> Let's quit fucking around here. If our mom were a duck, we'd be following right behind her when she's going to the pond. Right. But we'd have to stop and turn around and wait for the, the second child to come because it's kind of wobbling. And we have to wait for it because it'll probably get eaten by predators. <laughs> so we have to fucking wait for you. Oh boy, uh, you're made. You're made in God's image. Okay, you are. You're all special and unique in your own way. But you're defective, watered down. You got the WD. You're you refurbished, and you're deficient. <laughs> you're deficient. <laughs> deficient. <laughs> like I would say to him, what word is this? Not having enough of a specified quality or ingredient. What would that be? I don't know, dude. Yeah. You don't know. Exactly. You're proving it. (laughs) You're lacking in some necessary quality or element. That's exactly it. Bro, are you calling me substandard? Do do you want to compare DNA? (laughs) (laughs) I'll put my DNA up against yours any time you want. Flawed, okay? (laughs) Insufficient. Kind of incomplete. Oh, shit. Our fucking brothers are going (laughs) to both get in the car like Thelma and Louise and go off a cliff. Either that or they're going to come to our houses and beat our asses. I know. (laughs) Yeah, I had fun on the show, but then I heard the writing sessions and um, what was that whole bit about being incomplete? Some people have kids and they go, that's awesome. And then some people have a kid and it's unsatisfactory. Right. And they can't put you back, so they feel guilted into having to just take care of you. Damaged. Unequal. Kind of third string. Derelict. Yeah, you're derelict of wholeness. (laughs) Not really adequate. Kind of substandard. Of lesser value. Erroneous. Meaning with error. You wouldn't pass inspection if we were a car. They'd be like, oh, shit. Wow, dude, just, I mean, I'm, I'm not even going to hook up the computer. This year, you're, you're all right. This one. This one's got problems. Things, <laughs> the problem's going to take a little bit of work. <laughs> uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> penis. Say penis. Penis. Louder. Penis. Gob. Jism. Spunk. Spurt. Spooge. <laughs> splooge. Load. Skeet. Squirt. Spunk. Nut. <laughs> baby batter ball barf back in our grandparents day it was like do you want to make love and now it's like ball juice fucking twerking craziness buttermilk chode nectar <laughs> clam sauce cock droplet <laughs> cock snot <laughs> cuckoo spit crack wax cream crud cum custard daddy sauce dog water erectoplasm uh. I mean, there's even subcategories, paranormal. Like, yeah. You know. Fish dip, flower water, fun gel, gentleman's relish. <laughs> Leonese, lech water, liquid silk, live cultures. Live cultures? <laughs> You're going to take my live cultures? Ew. Get the fuck out of here. Ew. Man chowder, man foam, man period, man seed, <laughs> knob slurry, nizzle drizzle, ointment, <laughs> oyster droppings, pale marmalade, pearl jam, penis colada, <laughs> population paste. These people are fun of everything. Protein shake, salad dressing, schlong jelly, scum, sink bubbles. <laughs> Snake spray. Soap. (laughs) Snake spray. Throat yogurt. Trouser gravy. (laughs) Turkey spit. (laughs) Wad wang pus. The pus is so disgusting. Wank paste. Wiener sauce. Wet paint. Willy milk and worm gob. You know all dudes came up with all of that. I love, I love, I love my calendar girl. Did you know that I had the attention of people in Fowler in ninth grade because I had a special calendar up in my uh, 
and my fucking locker. What do you mean? You, you, you mean that? you had the special attention of someone because of your calendar? No, of, of the people, of like the different, well, mostly dudes, because I had a, a naked chick calendar. When it came close to the first of the month, when I had to change it, I turned around, there'd be like 100 people behind me. <laughs> and then I'd, I'd change it to the next one. And like people would come hang out to still check out the fucking calendar. And then one day I opened up my fucking locker and the calendar's gone. So the principal or whoever must have heard about this got the numbers and went in and took my calendar out. They confiscated the goods. Yeah. You could have charged and money for that. I should have, man. I should have charged a quarter. You know, a quarter like, so step like right up, milk. step right up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? What kind of, was it a Playboy one? Um, I don't know if it was a Playboy. We had this place called Book Warehouse in Syracuse that you probably remember. And uh, Remember, I used to work there. <laughs> you used to work there? Yeah, I did for a stint for like maybe six months. Happy Halloween! <laughs> yeah, I remember dressing as the crow for Halloween. And you know how he has tape on him? Electrical tape on his wrist and, like, stomach area? Yeah. The dude helped me get dressed for Halloween. He did the tape so tight I could hardly breathe the whole night. You could have cut off all your circulation. I didn't care. I looked fucking cool, though. <laughs> I had this hair of the same length at that time, like Kurt Cobain length. And I'd put it in a fucking tail. They use tape for tourniquets and, the, and you're wrapping your body in tape. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, happy Halloween. <laughs> I couldn't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun times. Oh, shit. Get out. If you and Disaster came into hard times and your allotment of pay or whatever went in a half and your choices were a haunted apartment that you know is haunted or a funeral home apartment haunted this as long as i don't see something standing there right you can move things around a bit you could you know throw stuff turn on a light maybe hear some screaming once in a while that's the thing with our old apartment it was haunted a bit but i i never saw anything there are a lot of times where i you know i'm gonna open up the door and see something in the hall but luckily it never happened yeah. So, but yeah, so I think the new people, there's new hipster fucks that moved into our apartment, our yeah. old apartment. One dude looks about 5'5", five five. he's got a fucking beard, he's got an 80s bandana around his head. Oh, man. <laughs> he's wearing, like, goofy shit. I'm thinking, have fun with the fucking ghost, because they did a bunch of remodeling. Oh, yeah, that stirs it up. So I'm pretty fucking sure, because we, we knew pretty quickly that something was up when we heard that. <sighs> Whatever. Man, a lot of history. Have fun with it. Well, there's one thing I got to stop doing when I come home is going to 7 Eleven and get one of those. It's like a roll that has cheese in it that's okay. spinning there with the fucking hot dogs and everything. A roll of cheese uh, that's spinning. Uh, they're called like, I forget what they're called, but it's like a breaded spicy roll. And in the middle, like they'll have one that has taco meat and cheese they'll have one that just has like, like pepper a, jack like a stromboli type of thing no they're the size of a hot dog yeah and they're crispy it's like if you took like a tortilla and wrapped something like put shit in the middle okay you can house one down when i have drinks i don't eat so when i get home i'm starving and i need to eat something now are they like a taquito you know? yeah i think that's it Taquito, that's exactly it. So what happened to you? You got sick? Oh, man, it was bad. Within 30 seconds, I'm like, I have to get the bathroom now. It was terrible, What man. do you think it was? That fucking taquito. But what was all in I the really taquito? Ate. What was in it? Oh, uh, it was the taco one. So it had, like, beef and, like, cheese. Oh, okay. Yeah, and um, I'm thinking, this can't poison me. It's fucking bread and fucking cheese. Right. But maybe the meat, I don't know yeah, what it was. But, and then, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, go to the bathroom, you know, I take a shower shortly after. I had to hop out of the shower, oh, mid-shower. Oh, that's one of those. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh. Yep. It was, in, it was twisting pain and twisting. Fucking bad. I'm actually very thankful right now I don't feel like that anymore because I didn't get much sleep because of that. My intestines were twisting. Yeah, I was in such pain. There was a moment where I'm like, if this gets any worse, like another 5%. I'm going to have to get disaster. We're going to have to figure something out. Right. I mean, it was taking my breath away, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite Tom Capello. And then he says, I'm trying to be as good as Rob Lowe. 
You mean you Tim me to Capello that? or Tom? You said that's Tom. what I meant. Yeah. No, let me fix that. I, don't know, I wrote. You Tom had to throw your reason. Tim Capello. I'm going to let you keep it because you're throwing oh. Tim Capello in. Uh, we <laughs> we all have. You're, you're Tim Capello. What other two? What other two saxophone dudes do you know from the '80s? I don't. I don't. But that's okay because okay, anyone who listens to our show is going to know who the fuck Tim Capello is. <laughs> Hello. It's suddenly going to start getting residual checks for eight dollars from us. <laughs> if this ever hits big, yeah, I'm hiring that fucker to come play for us at our show. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a couple of bouncers to hold my mom back from just storming the fucking stage. <laughs> well, maniacs, there you have it. This concludes the writing sessions.